Right, if you remember yesterday, we're, <clears throat> we're learning now a speech that the Rebbe gave to the Shluchim, to his emissaries. This Shabbat is also going to be to his representatives <clears throat> all over the world. And the Rebbe said that we have to have representatives. It's a necessary thing in order to bring Mashiach. And that's the whole purpose of <clears throat> Chabad and the purpose of Judaism, the purpose of the creation is to bring and to reveal Mashiach. <clears throat> and like we said so many times before, Mashiach is going to be a person that he's going to <clears throat> reveal the potential, the good in everything in the world. And this is going to do through the Torah. We said that's what <clears throat> we see in our Torah portion that Abraham sent a messenger. He sent a representative. Eliezer, in order to bring about, to accomplish the marriage of Abraham's son, Yitzchak, and Abraham's bride-to-be, Rivka. And this goes according to very deep Kabbalistic principles, which boils down to Yitzchak represents godliness coming from above to below, and Rivka represents the world which is going to receive this godliness. Or in Kabbalistic terms, it's called Ma and Ban. Ma is blessing coming from above. above. Ma is the numerical value of 45, which is a, a certain way of filling up <coughs> phonetically the name of God, Yud, K, Vav, K, fill it up. We, we, we spoke about this. And Ban is another aspect of God, which is more like the world. <clears throat> so in order to do this, you're going to have to have two things. <clears throat> Two examples of leaders of Israel that sort of accomplished this, but didn't complete it. <laughs> we have Moses and we have King David. Moses' main thing was he was a teacher. He brought the Torah down. <laughs> king David's main thing that he was a king. He brought into the world a humility, a surrender. That's a king. A king, everybody surrenders to the king <clears throat> without understanding. That's the main thing of a king. The Rebbe is going to talk about this in other speeches also that he's going to give. But the king's main thing is that he brings surrender into the world. The king, you don't understand the king. <clears throat> the king gives orders, you don't ask any questions unless it'll help you to do the orders better. <clears throat> Moses, the main thing is the Torah. The Torah is understanding. The main thing. <clears throat> so that's what it says so David, King David he's the main thing, his main thing is the Mashiach the Mashiach is going to be a king but Moshe, Mos, Moses by asking God to send somebody make a shliach, make a messenger an emissary so Moshe united this is what's hinted at that Mashiach is the numerical value of Shliach, and you have to add 10. Because the whole completion of Mashiach can only be revealed by means of a Shliach, by revealing the fact that every Jew is an emissary, a representative of God, and the Mashiach himself is a representative and an emissary of God. <coughs> Excuse me. This is by using the ten powers of your soul from the highest, which is called Chachman, to the lowest, which is called Malchut. Al Pia Yadu, according to what we said, <clears throat> that every single Jew has in him, her, from this level of Moshe, Moses, the Torah, and the level of the Mashiach, a king, surrender. So we can understand that every Jew has these two aspects. It's within us, so it must be that it can be expressed in our personality. Every single Jew is a shliach. Every single Jew, every single Jew, not this, the, the Rebbe is saying, not just the people that are sitting here in this, in this shliach convention. All of these the wonderful Chabad Hasidim that run the Chabad houses and the schools day and night self-sacrifice, you aren't the only ones that are my emissaries. 
Every Chabad Hasid is, Hasid is, and even more, every Jew is. Every Jew is an emissary of God. Why? <clears throat> to do what? What's our job? To illuminate the world, to reveal the truth in the world, like we just finished learning. To illuminate the world with the light of holiness and the light of godliness. And in this, <clears throat> can be done in two ways. Like, for instance, like the sun and the moon. The Moora Gadol, the big illuminator and the small illuminator. <clears throat> like it's known that every single person has the whole entire world encapsulated in their heart. Every single Jew, <clears throat> they say, the, illustrates the whole entire world, everything in the world, the sun and the moon. First of all, every Jew has to be like the sun. Shemesh. Avodato, <clears throat> and every Jew has to be a receiver, like the moon. Every Jew has to be a teacher, and every Jew has to be a pupil. Sha'ali Dezeb, by means of this, this illuminates the whole entire world with what's called a returning light. Like it says, Talmide Yotem Iklum. Yesh Bezeh, Masha'in Bezeh. To see it, you have a teacher that's a very great person and he knows everything he can teach, right? That's very impressive. You see, he knows everything. But if you go up to the teacher and say, teacher, I'd like to ask you a question. And you see that the teacher is really listening to you. <clears throat> and you say, teacher, listen, I think that maybe, maybe I don't understand something. It could be that you made a mistake. The teacher says, maybe I did. Yeah, it could be. And you see that the teacher is not, you know, he's not protective of himself and he doesn't get all... You know, what do you say, uh, uh, worried that maybe somebody's going to knock him down. He has humility. He's willing to receive. Oh, in some ways, this is more <clears throat> of a teaching than all the things that he teaches you. To know that this is the way to learn. <clears throat> but practice is in, 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 in detail. English and Yanim, these are two things that have to be in every shliach. Like Eliezer had. That was the questions we had before. On one end, we see that Eliezer was totally devoted to Abraham. He had no existence of his own. He even said, Avram Anochi. My whole identity is that I'm a servant of Abraham. But nevertheless, we also see that he made a lot of his own decisions. <clears throat> so that's what every shliach has to be. Every emissary of God. And who are the emissaries of God? We are. Here the Rebbe is saying every single Jew. We are emissaries to, from God, especially like Abraham, to the non-Jews, to the Gentiles, to tell them how much God loves them. That God is creating them. God is enlivening them. So every shliach, every emissary representative of God, that's what we are in this world, we have to have two things. Number one, total surrender <clears throat> to the one who's sending us to God, like the sun, like the moon. But he has to be in existence on his own. Abardat, use your own mind, use your own opinions. And he has to make his own decisions by his own intellect. And that's like the sun. To illuminate the world. So, so how can you both be, be like nothing and everything? <laughs> on one hand, you're totally surrendered to God. And on the other hand, you make up your own decisions. So, I mean, one way you can say it is a person just simply is fooling himself. He's fooling himself, right? A guy gets up and he becomes a big priest or something like that. He says, I am the Lord. I will tell you. I know what God is saying. And he's lying. He's lying. I mean, that's basically what Christianity is. A guy stood up and he said that, you know, all these religions are based on some one person coming and saying, I have the truth. I have the way. I have the this. I am the one. I have seen. I am known. on this. And it's a lie. But that doesn't mean that this whole attitude of being a receiver and a giver <clears throat> is wrong. The fact of the matter is, is that that's what each and every one of us is supposed to do, but not to fool ourselves. Not to fool ourselves. So on one hand, you have to be totally, and that's what the Rebbe is for. That's what Mashiach is for. The Rebbe is for to show us how not to fool yourself. And what's the check? How you know if you're not sure? That's the Torah. Every time you see someone doing something, saying something, even thinking something, expressing something, 
and you don't know if it's true or not, ask him to prove it according to the Torah. Where's the proof according to the Torah? If the Torah, if the Torah proof comes out, that's the whole Talmud. The whole Talmud is someone says, I'll tell you why I'm right. Because I say according to the Torah, and someone says, I'm sorry, you misinterpreted the Torah. That's not what that sentence means. It means something else. Oh, this is good. This is good. Because the Torah is the source. Can't be something that's true just because I say it. <clears throat> so on one hand, the person has to be totally surrendered to God and the Torah. But on the other hand, a person has to be, after he is totally surrendered, then he has to be active in the world. He has to use his <clears throat> individuality and his free choice and his ego in order to be proactive, to make the world a better place. Um, says, so now we see that Moshe and Mashiach, they are unified. Moses is the first redeemer, and he's the last redeemer. And this is what Moses accomplished by saying to God, Shalach nabi atishalach, that he united both aspects in the Mashiach. On one hand, he'll have the humility of King David. On the other hand, he'll be a teacher like Moses. He'll be a giver. So from this is also drawn into every single Jew, that every single Jew, because every single Jew is an emissary of God, this will unify these two things, namely to be a leader and to be a follower. What's the most important? I would imagine to be a follower is most important. The Jewish people are servants of God. But a servant has to do a certain job. And once you're a servant, you're totally devoted to God. You're totally connected to the truth. Then after that, you can be a teacher. So that's the idea of, of a teacher, of, of a Shemesh, the son. S-U-N. Sheyesh l'ashnei pirushim. Shemesh, the word Shemesh means simple meaning. It gives light. But a shemesh in Hebrew, a shamesh, is also a servant. Huh? Shamesh means a servant. In, in synagogue, they have the sextant is called the shamesh. What is the shamesh? Because he's serving everybody. He's a public servant. You have a question, you go to him. Something broken, you go to the shamesh to fix it. Habitol shel shaliach. This is the <clears throat> shamesh means that he's giving, he's, he's, act, he's the leader. And on the other hand, we have shamish means the surrender of the shaliach to the one who's sending him. Like Eliezer was surrendered to Abraham, and Abraham was surrendered to God. So also the shluchim, they're surrendered to the Rebbe, the, the Mashiach, and Mashiach is totally surrendered to God. Mitzad this, it says, I was only created in order to shamish et koni, the reason, only reason I was created, right in the end of <clears throat> the Mishnah, the Mishnah is of, of uh, Kedushin. I was created only to serve my master. Every Jew says, I was only serve, created to serve my creator. And we teach the whole world to do the same thing. <speaking in Hebrew> that the, I was not created, except, and as my whole existence only comes to serve my creator. Alpiyam Adubar, well, like we said before, that the power <clears throat> to do the shlichos <clears throat> this all comes from the power that we have to embody and to express these two opposites, that we're totally surrendered to the one who sends us. And on the other hand, we are totally independent, that we make up our own, <clears throat> our, we have to make our own decisions, etc. Where do we get this ability to be both things, to be totally humble and to be totally uh, a, a leader and a ruler? Where do we get this from? From that, the first shliach in the Torah that Abraham sent Eliezer. Here it is, right in our Torah portion. To make this uniting, this match coming together of Yitzchak and Rivka. So now we can understand that just like this first shlichut, Abraham gave everything he had to Eliezer. He was the shliach. Because this was important in order to do his shlichus properly, that all the details were permeated with this one point of ma and ban, namely the unity of Yitzchak and Rivka. We talked about this before, these two aspects of God, the giving aspect and the receiving aspect. Kamoke, and similarly, so Abraham gave everything he had. Also, every single shliach 
every single Jew, who we are all shluchim of God, to serve the Creator. He receives from God everything that he has. Mia <clears throat> Mishalech, from the one who's sending him, which is God himself. Until it reaches <clears throat> God's essence and his quintessence. Everything that he has. In order to bring about, bring to the Jew a soul and a body in this world physically to actually do what God wants, to change the world. <clears throat> or often in such a way, shakala pratim, or pretty pratim, all the details and the details, other details in the service of every Jew are permeated with this one point, and that is to reveal the Mashiach in this physical world. That's what's called the uniting of Ma and Ban. <clears throat> so again, what is Mashiach? <clears throat> Mashiach then will be just like Moses and just like King David. Just like Moses, he'll be a teacher, he'll be a giver. And just like King David, he'll bring about surrender to the whole world. All mankind will be surrendered to the Creator. That's Mashiach. All this we can add on even more in our generation, especially. Our generation has a special. Now, I mean, let's be straightforward with this thing. There has to be a Mashiach in every generation. And the Rebbe said many times that the Mashiach of every generation, every generation is the Chabad leader of that generation. And that's what the previous Rebbe, the leader of our generation, appointed every single Jew. And like I say, that the Rebbe himself said many times that he is only just a representative and a continuation of the previous Rebbe. So the previous Rebbe, and the Rebbe is implying himself also, has appointed every single Jew of this generation <clears throat> to be his representative, his emissary, <clears throat> his shliach, to spread out Torah and Judaism and spread out the chasidut of the Torah until it will bring the true redemption to the whole entire world. Like we see actually that now it's easier to explain to another Jew, even to a Jew that previously had no connection to this, that in addition to his individual service in the world, but yesh lo gam et ha'achereyot liot shliach, that you can explain to another Jew, not only are you supposed to be doing the commandments of God, and learning the Torah of God, and li living in a Jewish way, and avoiding the things that God wants you to avoid. But not only that, Mr. Jew, that you think you're not religious, not only are you supposed to do Torah and the commandments, you're supposed to convince others also. La Shpia, to give over <clears throat> from what you know to others. Hechel mi b'nei beso, beginning with your family, your friends, your acquaintances, call Mishu Yochal, every that everyone that you can reach to, to the non-Jews, tell them about the seven Noahid commandments. And this adds Menogeya <clears throat> Asher Zachu to those people who had the merit that among the Jewish people themselves, they were chosen to be the Shluchim, the Shluchim, the emissaries of the leader of the generation, that the previous Rebbe appointed them or the Rebbe appointed them. And all their service for all 24 hours of the day is only devoted to one thing, spreading out Torah, Judaism, the Hasidut, the ideas of Hasidut, the inside of Judaism, to bring the future redemption. Allah had come over come. How much more so if all the shluchim? Now the Rebbe is speaking to all the shluchim, right? There's like 2000. This was 1992. This is 30 years ago. That these emissaries, the Chabad emissaries from all the... So what's the Rebbe saying? The fact of the matter is you're not the only shluchim. Every Jew is. But you're examples. You're examples of what a shliach is supposed to be. So be good examples. <clears throat> the Rebbe is an example of what a Jew is supposed to be. 
and the Rebbe is an example to you. And you are supposed to be an example of what an emissary is supposed to be. Also to be a good Jew. And you're supposed to convince other people, <clears throat> you're supposed to be an example to them what they're supposed to be. They're also supposed to be emissaries. Until finally, we can do accomplish what God wanted, that all the Jewish people will become <clears throat> the emissaries of God. They'll reveal, the, be the sons of God. Sons of God as, as far as S-O-N and also S-U-N. So this is the Rebbe is speaking in the, the Shluchim convention that this is a kinnus that tzaddikim is good to them and it's good for the world. This will bring true beauty and pleasure, I did say pleasantness, the pleasantness of holiness to them and to the world. And the world, and this word world in Hebrew has the same letters as concealment, helem. Helem of Esther, to this confusion of the world, <clears throat> we are supposed to bring order and light and meaning. And especially when we have now this tennis of shluchim olami, that all the shluchim are here <laughs> from all the corners of the world. <clears throat> and their service is <clears throat> to get rid of this confusion, darkness, ignorance, and opposition of the world to godliness and to transform it, not just to get rid of it, but to transform it. What's the difference between eradicating and transforming? What's the difference? Let's say you have an enemy, right? The enemy attacks you. Israel is attacked by 1 billion Chinese soldiers and planes and everything. So one way is that we have secret weapons, right? We have these uh, ultrasonic waves or cosmic rows, whatever it is, rays, and whatever it is, and we can just wipe them all out, just you know, knock them all out. Or we pray to God and God just, that's it. They're just not there anymore. Just a bunch of shoes or something. Chopsticks. I don't know what. That's it. That's one way. No, that, that's pretty amazing, you know. But then there's a better way. And then all of a sudden, someone stands up and he says, in Chinese, my friends, you're making a big mistake. Why are you destroying? You have tremendous potential to do good. Your leaders are driving you crazy and they don't like you at all. They hate you and they want to kill you. Let's work together and you have talents that no one else has and we have talents, let's work together. And all the army says, wow, that's a pretty good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. And the leaders are saying, what are you doing? And the, 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 the armies, they say, listen, I mean, you're being fooled also. You're fooling yourself. And the leaders say, yeah, 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 maybe you got a point. Maybe, let's, let's try it. Let's work together. Oh, that means you've transformed all of this energy, all of this uniqueness of every human being. You've transformed it to good. Instead of spending all their energy learning how to kill and how to maim and how to this, all of a sudden, everything becomes good and, and, and fruitful. I mean, that's the purpose of life. I mean, just let, take an example. I, I think this is an example, but maybe it's not a good, but I think it's, I think it's a really good example. In China, let's start China. So they have this thing that there's too many people, there's too many Chinese. So they made this law that uh, you, a person can't have more than one, one child. One child, that'll keep the, the, um, the population down. And of course, all these economists and Bill Gates and said, this is a good move. Oh, this is good. Too many people in the world. Lubavitch Rebbe says exactly the opposite. Where do people come from? They come from God. Where does life come from? It comes from God. Every human being is unique. Every human being has tremendous potential for good. All you have to have is one person that comes out and he discovers a way to transform ocean water into bread. Can it be done? Up to now, it hasn't been done, but it could be. He finds a way to transform air into <clears throat> water and, and nutrients. One person, that's it. He fixes the whole world up. I, I don't know how much of the world is settled now, but I would imagine, you know, actually, if you, you take out all the, the rivers and the waters and the mountains and everything like that, 
<clears throat> even the, 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 the inhabitable places, you know, I imagine that, I don't know, 10% of the world is inhabited, something like that. but if you include all the deserts and, you know, so-called uninhabitable places, if you include that, then probably like much less than, you know, a, a tenth of a 1% is inhabited. You know, have this huge areas in Russia and things like that. They're inhabited. So if you could figure out a way to make these places fertile, and uh, that, that there's, you should have a lot of room. In Israel, for instance, there's tremendous amounts of room. Drive from, from Tel Aviv to, to Jerusalem, it's all empty fields. The whole world is like that. So there's enough room, and there's enough potential, and there's enough, but you have to think positively. And that's what it means to transform the darkness of this world. People look at the world, and all they see is black. There's not enough food to go around. There's not enough air. Everybody's going to die. Let's kill them before they die, before they're born. Right? That's very, 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 very sick and evil. And But our job is to transform this into good. But that gufo and this itself, this is the whole idea of the kenes of the shluchim, of the of this meeting of all of these chabad emissaries every single year. And this we're going to learn tomorrow. This we're going to learn tomorrow. Yes, God willing, Friday we will have a class and we'll learn this. God willing, tomorrow we'll finish the sicha tomorrow. It's a Yes, we have time to do it. Good. So <clears throat> let's, first of all, let's learn the uh, Yom Yom, Hayom Yom. One of the teachings of the Magid and Mesrits, Magid and Mesrits was the main pupil of the Baal Shem Tov. And the Magid and Mesrits, he had, they say, like 60 pupils. And one of them was the first Rebbe of Chabad. He was the youngest, and in a way, he was the most gifted. And this was heard by the first Rebbe of Chabad when he was in Mezrich. It says, Anochi, I created the world, and I put man on it. Anochi, the true I of God, is unknown and concealed from even the highest angels. But God put his essence by means of all these contractions and concealments in order to create the whole physical world, beginning with the angels, angels called the burning angels, the animal angels, the wheel angels, the seraphim, chayod. He created all these worlds without number. And he did this by means of all these veil, veils and condensations and, and contractions and hiding articulations, huh? I made this physical world, and on it, I created man. That's what God did. Man is the end purpose of creation. And barati, I barati, I created. That's the word barati, is the purpose of man. The word barati has the numerical value of 613. In other words, the reason man was created was in order <clears throat> that the Jews should do these 613 commandments. That's in the Kabbalistic book called Pardes. It quotes a book called Sefer HaBahir, another Kabbalistic book, which was much earlier. Said the attribute of kindness said before God, the creator, the master of the universe, since Abraham came into the world, I have not been able to do any kindness. Abraham does it in my place. What does it mean? The attribute of God's kindness is God gives kindness <clears throat> to everybody. Not everybody can accept it. Right, some people use the kindness, and they right the evil people. God gives them life, even though they don't deserve it, and they just keep getting more evil. But Abraham, no, Abraham found evil people, and he did them kindness in a way that would stop them from being evil, that they would call the name of God. It says, because Abraham, a soul in the body, he's doing hospitality to strangers as a means of spreading out God in this world. This is on a higher level than even the highest spiritual levels of Atzilut. This is an expression of the upper worlds and their envy of Abraham's service. This is Abraham's service. And as when we do a good deed in this physical world, it's higher than the highest levels of God's love in any of the upper worlds, even the highest levels of it. 
by us doing a good deed in this world, it's higher than any expressions of love, of good, that can be found in even the highest of worlds. Why? Because when we do good in this world, it gives the essence of God pleasure. And the upper worlds, that only gives us pleasure. And that's what Abraham brought into the world, the ability to serve God and to transform this physical world to godliness. And it's going to happen in a big way by Mashiach. Now, have a good day. Three o'clock, God willing, we're learning Chumash. Hope to see you all.